How's it going guys? So I've already done a video talking about how to budget for a $5,000 music video. Let's up the ante a little bit and talk about where the budget would go in the case of a $15,000 music video. My name is Joshua Lefemi and I'm here in Brisbane, Australia just for this month. And knowing effective production and budgeting is just as important as knowing how to shoot, light, and edit. Now for the longest time, I only had experience directing low budget music videos. I'm talking about from $0 up to like $1,000. Yeah, basically it means I just did a lot of free stuff. That obviously meant most of the time I was just working with a small inexperienced crew of mainly just friends or anyone that was nice enough just to help me out for the day. This basically meant that you were the most knowledgeable person on set and the buck kind of stops with you regarding any important creative or technical decision that needs to be made on set. I mean, this is a really great way to start off. It gives you a lot of opportunities to hone in your skills, but truly great productions, in my opinion, always require a team and not just any team, but an experience experienced team that excels in their own specific fields of specialization. And it's only when you get those bigger budgets that you're actually able to hire those experienced teams. And it doesn't stop there. You'll need to know how to hire these professional teams, what a professional team or crew even consists of, how to manage them, and most importantly, how much they're going to cost. The biggest music video production that I've ever gotten was about $100,000, but my usual music video budgets range between $15,000 and $20,000. What I want to do in this tutorial is use one particular $15,000 music video that I actually just did a few months ago, and I want to break down the budget piece by piece. The song is actually pretty awesome. The lyrics were in Hindi. It was performed by my friend Dewana and the song was called Sonye. So the budget, here's how it was broken down. You'll actually be able to download this budget via a download link down in the description. So I had originally planned to give myself $6,000. In this case, I was the director, the editor, the VFX lead, and the colorist. I would have been in charge of leading pre-production, which would have consisted of envisioning and drafting the treatment, and this usually takes a few days, hiring the DP, the producer, and the grip and electric crew, leading the production, which basically involves leading the team during production day, and leading post-production, which basically just involves a week or two of going back and forth with the client to perfect the edit. And then there's VFX, and then there's coloring, tack on a few extra days for that, depending on the project. The reason I take all the time to break this down is it's really easy to accidentally underpay yourself as a director slash lead creative. Why? Because it's so easy to forget the actual number of production slash work hours that you're putting into the project. This this entire process that we just went over from pre-production to post-production in this case took a total of 80 work hours break down six thousand dollars and that computes to about 75 dollars per hour my next task was hiring a producer my original plan was to pay him three thousand dollars guys a producer is so so crucial my mentor matt would always tell me josh always budget a producer even for the smaller projects and i was always like why and then he was always like, producers let creatives be creative. Basically, he was saying that as a director, you cannot be distracted from your main role, which is lead creative. The producer is the lead project administrator. They organize the production budget. They handle the production insurance. They pull permits. They're the main point of contact with the client. They're the main point of contact with the PA trying to find a parking spot. They organize catering. They Amazon in and prompt to prop materials, send out PAs on random tasks during the day, and so much more. No one on set should have your number or be calling your number as the director, because you need to be in that creative zone. Everything, and I mean everything, should go through the producer to you. And then there's the DP. The DP operates the camera, and they're also in charge of coordinating with the grip and electric team and creating the actual looks on set. I paid my DP in this case $1,000 for the day. He usually comes with his full red Epic W package, including his Ronin. For this project, he also brought in an additional kit of rented modern anamorphic lenses, which tacked on another $300 to the budget. Then there's the AC or assistant camera. They help the DP with setting up the camera and focus pulling remotely. I paid my AC $350 for the day. The ACs are one of those unsung heroes on set. They sit in a corner all day, keeping your footage in focus by looking at a tiny screen. Next on the budget is the grip team and the electric team. They're usually referred to combined as the G and E team. The electric team is responsible for designing and executing the lighting plan on set to create the designing look that the director wants on set. The gaffer leads the electric team and I paid him $300 for the day. Usually he'd have an assistant called the best boy, but we couldn't afford to hire one for the shoot. The grip team is in charge of diffusing and cutting the light on set. They're also in charge of physical camera movement, covering anything from moving a dolly, operating a crane, or putting on vehicle mounts. The key grip leads the grip team and I paid him $350 for the day, as well as an extra $500 to use his one ton grip truck. His grip truck was chuck full of the standard one ton grip and lighting kit. 
Then I paid another $1,200 for my key grip to rent 32 Astera light tubes. These were programmable LED tubes that were crucial to our set design. Lastly, I had my key grip build me two big set pieces for this shoot, a massive metal cube and a hanging pyramid chandelier. He charged me an additional $1,500 for these to be built and transported to set. Then I realized I actually wanted two Chinese hat lights to actually swing back and forth in one of my performance setups. I also wanted a camera dolly and eight pieces of 45 degree track and three pieces of eight foot straight track. My key grip didn't have any of these in his truck, so we had to rent all these separately. The lights, the camera, and the dolly cost about $200 extra to rent, and then we had to rent an actual U-Haul truck to carry this extra equipment to set, and that cost another $200. I also hired an assistant for my key grip, and he was paid $300 for the shoot day, as well as an additional $300 for driving that U-Haul truck from the U-Haul office to the rental house. Then from the rental house to his house, to have it sit overnight the day before the shoot, then from his house to set on the shoot day, and then he also took everything back after the shoot ended. And then there's the DIT, the Digital Imaging Technician. They move all the footage from each card coming out of your camera onto external hard drives. A good music video IT will have an incredible organizing system that they use. A really good IT will actually transcode your footage into low-res proxies right there on set, and even sync all your takes on the Premiere timeline. I paid my DIT 300 for the day, and I told him he didn't have to worry about transcoding or syncing footage. Note that veteran ITs that come with their massive computer setups and offer all the bells and whistles will charge up to $800 for their services. So you need to make sure that you get the specific DIT that you need for the specific job. Next on the budget was the MUA or the makeup artist and the hairdresser. I paid them $300 each. They ensure that your talent is looking absolutely perfect in every take. It's really important to give them the space that they need every couple of takes to dab off sweat and fix makeup. It's easy to forget that, but their role is crucial. MUAs and hairdressers care more about close-up shots rather than wide shots. So communicating with them when you're filming wide shots will help you a ton during a time crunch because it'll allow them to work faster since they don't have to focus on all the tiny details that the wide lens won't pick up. Next on the budget was my choreographer who I paid $400 and then her two dancers that I paid $300 each. Next we had food. I had planned for that to total about $500 for the day. This would include all the food that was available all day on the craft services table as well as the catered lunch that would serve the around 20-ish people that were on set. Now as far as the location, we shot at a popular shooting location called Studio 60 just south of downtown LA. The warehouse studio that we chose initially quoted us $3,000 for the day. Lastly, we paid $800 to the city of Los Angeles for our film permit via Film LA, and we paid $300 to acquire $1 million worth of production insurance for the day. And congratulations, we've completed the budget. But wait, let's add that up. We're up to $21,700, and we only have $15,000 to spend which sucks. We have one of two solutions. We either ask for more money from the client or we cut costs. In our case, there wasn't really any more money available from the client and we had actually pitched this budget to the client um, and I'd pitched this budget before I added in all those extra, you know, equipment expenditures and, you know, from extra ideas I had after the fact. So it wasn't really professional to really ask for a significant amount of money more. Um, so we had to end up cutting things from production. We found out that we actually needed to cut $6,700 to get back to our $15,000 budget. So usually when I'm in a place like this, I'm like, I need to cut the non-fixed costs first. Maybe we'll cut down props or the number of extras or transportation costs or something like that. Then I usually cut from my personal fee. And then if that's not enough, I cut from my producer's fee. The very last things I'll cut will be the crew and the food. At this point, I know what my cruise rates are and I usually try not to request for them to work for any less than that. It's just a respect thing. And when you cut food too much, then everyone ends up just hating you. Good food on a film set is a sacred expectation that should always be upheld if possible. We'll have to talk about that in another vid. So this is what actually happened. We ended up cutting $1,000 from the location cost by renegotiating with the venue. I cut $3,000 from my directing, editing, VFX, and coloring fee. I know that was kind of a lot. And my producer cut $2,000 from his fee. And then I cut $200 from food. So yeah, the shoot ended up requiring some major cuts, but we all ended up having a pretty massive blast in the end. The fact that my producer and I took the brunt of the cuts hurt our personal bottom line, but allowed us to leave most of our production design concepts in the video and make a final piece that we were all proud of. The more big budget projects that you do, the less you'll have to cut things after the fact because you'll get better at pre-predicting production costs. With each shoot, you'll get more and more organized as well and you won't do things like forget certain parts of the budget that you have to add in later, which can contribute to getting over budget. As you do this more guys, treatments will more accurately represent budget restrictions and you'll get to keep even more of your budget fees. This should be the goal. Beautiful shoots with sustainable and acceptable profit margins. Hopefully this was a useful video guys. Revealing my actual production budget was a little bit personal to me, 
but I hope it'll be beneficial to you as you navigate the process of big budget management. If you'd like an editable PDF of my budget breakdown, you can check it out in the link below. If you're an artist and you need a music video and would like to work with our team, you can hit us up on IG at madebyolufemi or via email at josh at olufemi.com. I've downloaded an incalculable amount of stock footage, dope titles, awesome VFX packs, transition packs, and literally anything else you can think of from Envato Elements, which is our channel sponsor. It's a subscription service that's only $33 a month, and via my special link below, you can get it for only $9 for the first month. The best part is you can cancel at literally any time, and you get unlimited downloads from a massive library. And lastly, guys, the Olufemi Tutorials team has three incredible new sound effects packs for your video editing pleasure. The 50 pounds of swish pack, which is basically just a massive sound effects pack full of 50 wishes or swishes. The two cinematic sound pack, which you can use in trailers, films, and music videos. And then the eerie sound effects pack. This is kind of a specialty pack full of all these cool eerie sounds. All of these were especially made for you by my bro Nate Roots, AKA Killgood, and they're all available for purchase in the link below. All these packs are $50 each, but if you buy them before New Year's 2020, you can get them all in a bundle for $50 total. You gotta try them out. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to like this video and click subscribe and click the notification bell so you can be notified when we have future videos. And as always guys, remember to keep it chill.